Welcome to Being the Genuine Athlete podcast, where we inspire those who aim for excellence in life and want to understand the how and what it takes to be a champion in life. My name is Jura Koschak. My purpose, dedication and commitment is to activate your potential, that you understand the ego through your sport and life situations. So I share and give you the tools to be just this, the genuine athlete. Are you ready to tune in? Hello, Zuzana. Thank you for joining the Being the Genuine Athlete podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Where are you now? I'm in Queensland in Australia, so other it's, side of the world. Yeah, it, it's morning at my place and it's evening at your place. Great. Yeah. We have a lot of hours difference. And it uh, how it doesn't stop us. <laughs> no, it doesn't stop us. And, and how did you come there? Because I know that you were a lot of times in Australia in your career. Yeah, so I was playing a pro tour. The last two tournaments were canceled because of coronavirus. And I was supposed to fly home 31st of March, but flights got canceled again. So I had to, to be stuck here for longer and I had to reapply for visa. And yeah, so I'm still here for an, another two months. <laughs> you're a tennis player, a tennis professional since 13 years or something that you're on the tour. Yeah. Um, yes. You just mentioned to me before we started this uh, poor podcast recording, you played how many games in your career on the ITF and the tour? 746 matches. <laughs> 746. And that's counting with the doubles? No, they're just singles. Singles. And doubles, you are around, I think, 400, 300. It can be, yes. I didn't count doubles, but it can be, yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of matches that you've played. And... Uh, as I saw your uh, blog and your Instagram and your social media, and you emphasize how, uh, you, how much you love tennis. Yeah, it's so many people are telling me, when are you going to stop? You're already 30. Like, you don't have a career ahead of you. But I'm still I'm still a believer. I think that if you're still progressing and getting better and enjoying it mostly and not getting injured, I think why not? Like, it's my life. I can make my own you know, my own life and I chose tennis and I really can't stop. It's just such a passion for me that I, I really can't stop. Great. Uh, I already talked to some of your colleagues, to Nikki and to Sofia, uh, because of Anya, of course, she connects me with uh, you tennis players. And I love tennis and I admire tennis players, uh, regardless of the gender, because you are top 300, top 200 in the world and it's like you can barely live. We will touch yeah. some of these teams. And you invest so much and you are alone on the court. And it's a crazy story with tennis. And this, what's happening now with the situation, is a big change, is a big initiation that the whole world, in a way, will come together, will finally figure out and understand. Like I mentioned to Sofia, you are the one. Players, you give support to ITF and to other organizations they are not there like you know you are not there for them they are there for you because of you you are the exactly. basic essence yeah yes. without us there are no tournaments yes. there is no ITF so and, yeah. and now the, the foundation of it yes and the system now showed the cracks so yeah. the system now <laughs> showed how many cracks they are and on this you say lower tour you are not lower tour Whatever is top 2,000, 5,000, it's high tour because you invest so much. We are all different. It depends on us. Uh, like some other player, we will not mention his name, top five or something, the man player, what he said. But you all invest how much you can regarding your background, your circumstances. Yeah, you your try your best. Yes, your mentality. So, But tennis is, a very, is the most narrow sport in a way. Yes, maybe golf or maybe something else, but... That is not a team sport. Uh, I, I think that top 200,000 footballer or football player, a female, can have more and has more than a tennis player. Uh, yes. So it's a crazy thing how this is all rigged and strange. Please, uh, yes. let's dive in your uh, tennis life uh, that we get to know you a bit, that the listeners get to know you a bit more. Uh, where are you from and uh, why are you so much in Australia? <laughs> okay, so I love Australia so much. That's why I'm here. But uh, okay, so I'm from Slovakia. 
and I started playing when I was five years old and no one in my family plays tennis. And my dad came home one day and just asked me if I want to play tennis. And I said, I was very relaxed kid. And I just said, yeah, why not? I can try. I remember it like it was yesterday. And then I just went to this place where all the kids were running around and hitting just against the wall. There was not even a court. And I just instantly fell in love with it. And then I was there every single day. And then I never stopped playing. And uh, yeah, I just love traveling. Like you learn as a tennis player to handle the finances because you love tennis so much and you want to travel. You become a traveler expert. So you're trying to save money everywhere. Like you're staying at people's places. You're, you're saving on tickets. You, you go three, four planes to get somewhere because it's the cheapest option. You know, you stay at hostels. Like I have stories with hostels and places like that. So you're really like giving everything just to play the tournament. And I think it's, it makes us tennis players really strong and independent because you know what you're capable of and you're not scared of traveling. Like some of my friends in Slovakia, they're like, wow, like how can you travel? Like, aren't you afraid of things? And I'm like, well, you go and you see it, you experience good things, you experience bad things that are important for your improvement and, you know, experience. And then you just, yeah, you learn and it's like a drug. You get addicted and you want to more and you want to travel more. You want to meet more people, try new cuisines and see different courts and, and win more, of course, because that's what, why we are doing it, to, to have better ranking and trying to get to the top to make a living, finally. <laughs> but it's a hard ride to make a living from tennis. Uh, unless you get some sponsors or some investors or something, to make yeah. it from tennis and to play on these uh, lower priced money tournaments, it's a strange battle that I see. I think it's mostly the, the winners are getting some money. The, everyone else is losing money and that's the struggle. And I think the accommodation is the biggest, one of the biggest costs that needs to be reduced because paying every week if I say $50, that's cheap hotel every night. And if you have a coach, that's 100 and then traveling week after week, that's, and you're getting $200 prize money, 300, 400. It's still not enough. It doesn't even cost your accommodation. <laughs> so it's like a huge pressure that is put on players. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I remember once we flew to Argentina and I had this weight on me because I knew how much the flight ticket cost. It was so expensive, but there were three tournaments in a row. It was many years ago. And I just had this huge weight on my shoulders. And when I was playing, my mind was all the time, the whole match, I was like, I, I have to win, I have to win. I cannot lose because what if I lose? I get zero points, I get $98. It was $10,000 tournament. And of course I lost because you get tied and you cannot play. And then you bring yourself down because you shouldn't think like that. And just, it's like the whole circle. Yeah. It's a vicious circle, yeah, that, that draws you in and drains you energy and motivation and everything. And I like yeah. that, that you mentioned how adaptable, how much you can yeah. improvise as a player and how much that brings you uh, in life. And, and you can all become uh, travel a agents after your career in a way. Uh, or ha hack the system, but yeah. I am still amazed how come you players didn't hack the system of the ITF and the other WTA and ATP because, uh, and now, now it's happening finally. Now we're climbing slowly. Yes. <laughs> now you are finally getting to understand the picture that you need each other. You cannot play against and like just, you know, like vultures fight against yeah. each other because you need that prize money. You need a other players as well and you need to come together in the unity and this is what it's happening in the whole world in every organization not just tennis in other sports and in other stuff of life as well people coming together understanding how we can build and grow together yeah it's important to really come together and bring everyone together and that's when you're strongest because if it's just one against one or you know two against two that's nothing they're too strong for us that's yes association or you know federation is too big for us yeah you are being exploited 
That's yeah. good. You are being heard our voices. I feel like we need to be heard because it's not just 10 of us, 20 of us. It's hundreds of us. It's the most of the tour yeah. is struggling. And that's it's, it's, really sad part. It's hundreds of lives, thousands of lives, and uh, yeah. especially additional coaches that travel. And it's like a lot of uh, sacrifices that are being made for nothing in a way for yeah. nothing that could be improved. And it costs so much money. Like the parents are giving so much money to tennis, to coaches. They're trying their best, you know, they're paying physios, they're playing, they're paying uh, academies. And it's just once you get to ranking, because that's a, a huge achievement. I know so many players that never got into ranking and they were such a hard workers. I don't understand how they never got there, but it's that hard. And, and they did everything what they thought was right. But if something is missing, then it's, it's not going to happen or it's just a pure luck sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's why I think when I created this, this Facebook group, I thought that it could like be as a, as a thing where young players can come and really ask any question that they want to know and experienced players could all give their opinions. Okay, go to this place because there can be some possibility you can get easier points or don't go to this place the food is terrible, the hotel is, you will not even want to sleep there. So I think that's important to have this forum or this place where people can, players can share their experiences and help others. Great. We will touch more exactly what the group is about later, but let me know now and explain your stories. What happened to you on the tour? Maybe some of the main shift stories or the, the ones that shaped you, the ones that made you who you are and the ones, the stories that made you now so diligent and so open to help, to give support because you didn't have that earlier in your career. So what are those kind of stuff that you experienced? Well, I, I think my, my one of the biggest shifts was in 2011 when I won four tournaments in six weeks and in those other two weeks I played quarterfinal and semifinals and it just gave me such a boost of confidence that I really needed that because I knew I like to play tennis I like to have fun I was working hard but I was still not my mind was not there that I can compete against other girls when I looked at other girls I was like wow like that forehand like that backhand look at that serve I cannot even play with these girls and then I would play them and I was not stronger or faster. I was just like more creative and using the angles more and high balls and driving them crazy a little bit. And, and just, I just had really good endurance and running side to side that I just made them tired. And, and I was trying to go through the mind games and really make them angry and, and win the games that way because I was always a little bit shorter not not the tallest girl so i was trying to use that other side of you know <laughs> my my things that i could be these bigger girls biggest shift and then i feel like when i started coming to australia australia is very open-minded country and everyone is so welcoming that i just felt so happy here that i was like i want to bring this happiness everywhere and I just wanted to be friends with everyone. They wanted to be friends with me. We were having a huge, you know, like meetings at the tournaments with all the players, guys and girls having lunch together or my coach would buy some ice cream or something and we would have so much fun. And it didn't really feel like, you know, like, prof like professional. It was professional, but it was more in a relaxed way that you're a professional on the court. Once you, you're hitting, you do everything you can, you work hard. Once you get off the court, you turn off your friends. You know, like I, I think that's the best thing because I feel like I struggle when I need to be focused 24 seven and just think about tennis and think about serious stuff. Like I need some joy as well and to relax a little bit because yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't go well with my tennis if I'm too serious. Of course, it, it's life. We need the joy. Yeah. It's the essence. Uh, what other things did you uh, encounter? Uh, you mentioned now uh, the differences, how it is maybe in Asia or in Europe, for the professionalism and the fights between girls and, and how you don't look at each other and stuff. But you've mentioned now the other, the positive side from Australia. Yeah. 
how you are all bonded and uh, you talk a bit already Australian you mentioned the word started start, like in an Australian way accent that's okay <laughs> so you are a lot of times there how can you compare because now you've compared already a bit uh, the Australian version of professionalism and being friendly and the other side uh, how did you see traveling to you mentioned Argentina maybe North America and Australia these I know that you've traveled uh, in a van a lot of times, uh, driving a lot of thousands of kilometers uh, in Australia and also other countries. How was that? As a kid, it was my dream to go to Australia. I was always attracted to this country for some reason. And once I saw the tournaments, I was so excited to, to get here and play. But when I looked at the official hotel that was $250 a night, I was a bit like, okay, maybe I would survive two, three nights, but that's not enough. <laughs> but yeah, then I started thinking, I would not even sleep. I was just like, how can I get to Australia and travel? How can I get to Australia? So I found this website where they would advertise this, this camper vans. And they said after 30 or 40 days of hire, it's free. And, and uh, insurance as well, because insurance is extra and it's so expensive. So I calculated all my, all my costs, all savings, and, and also with my coach and my parents, you know, savings, and we calculated and it ended up as, as, a, as enough to just rent the camper van. So then we just risked it and we, we flew here and we rented a van for 77 days. And it was the ride of my life. Like now, when we think about it and we look back, we're like, we were, crazy because it's such a beginners and it's other side of the road and you don't know we thought it's all highways here we thought it you know like australia like highways it's you know infrastructure and everything then we came to brisbane we flew to brisbane we hired a car first 10 minutes we almost hit like three cars because how do you turn you know you go right you want to go left okay and then finally after 100 kilometers of, of highway the highway disappeared. It was just two ways road. And then we're like, okay, maybe. And, and the trip ahead of us was 1,700 kilometers. So it was at the top of the Australia in Cairns. So we drove for two days. And uh, yeah, the, the best thing about this camper van was we could sleep in the van. I thought it would be cramped, but it was, it was nice big bed in the, be in the back and also the kitchen so we could cook some you know easy easy meals and that was amazing and and then we did the whole australia trip which was in total was 15000 kilometers without the cruise control and that time i didn't drive so it was only my coach driving and once you're driving out back there is not even a signal or you know reception on your phone or the radio so my mom was telling me, okay, just ring me. You don't need to call. Just ring me that you're fine. And then for two days, I didn't even ring because there was no reception. <laughs> so when you're driving there in the outback, when we drove all the way to Perth, you don't meet a car there. Like you go for 500 kilometers, you don't see a car. Only, unfortunately, dead kangaroos, mostly. You see also live ones, but mostly dead kangaroos is so crazy here and once you meet a car it's approaching everyone is waving like crazy everyone's so happy that you see a car like hello <laughs> someone alive here so yeah so we just drove through through the whole Nalabor, Nalabor plane and I looked at the I just had the map I didn't have it in my phone that time it was you know no GPS at the time I guess or it was like more advanced I didn't have it and so I just had the map and I look at the map and I see this city called Nalabor Plain. And I said, oh, that's the city there. We can sleep there. We can have a fuel. As we were approaching a night, the fuel went down and we wanted to get fuel at the fuel station. But all the fuel station at the last city, they were closed. And it says the next fuel station in 128 kilometers. And we said, okay, we can do that. It's, it's, it sounds about right. And then we started driving and it went down so quickly that we were really, really on the edge. And my coach had a brilliant idea. We wait for a road train, it's called road train. So it's a huge truck with three or four trailers. So we wait for one, we got behind him 
and so we could save the air, you know, on the fuel on the air. So we would just go and the guy wanted to like let us go three, four times, but we didn't want to go. So once he understood that, we just continued on this, on this trip to this Nalabor city. And once we got there, luckily, with last liter of a fuel, of course it was closed because it was like 4 a.m. in the morning. And we said, even if it's $2 a liter, we will buy it. We woke up in the morning, it was $2 a liter. <laughs> So, and, and it was not even a city, it was just a fuel station. So that's how Australia is. Like you look at the map and you think it's a city, but it was just a fuel station just to get the fuel and you continue another 2000 kilometers. So it's a huge country, yeah. Amazing, and uh, this only shows how much you put yourself, tennis players, in, in situations yeah. that require a lot of uh, imagination and uh, resilience that you can adapt and find, uh, fight against these challenges that you break through. Yeah. So you have, a you have a lot of stories to tell and, and a book to write in a way, oh. all of you players. I'm sure we do. <laughs> yeah. Anything else happened to you elsewhere, not just in Australia maybe? A lot of stuff happened. One funny, it's not, it's not a funny story, but when we were starting as well, uh, we went to Barcelona and with my other friend and we would stay at the hostel and it was a hostel for 10 euros a night there would be 20 other people in the room sleeping with us so it was a bit crazy because you cannot have 20 people sleeping at the same time like they come and go they come and go they snore so much i couldn't sleep i was trying to snore back i was like so maybe I would like wake them up, but I didn't. <laughs> so we were not very fresh the next morning to play the tournament, but that's what you, we, we got to do because we didn't have money. So the only way to survive was to go to hostel and sleep on La Rambla hostel on the street, on the main street in Barcelona. Of course, it's amazing memory now, but at that time I was a little bit, you know, scared. But yeah, we tried two hostels in Barcelona. And you played tennis and you said before you do this because you love tennis, you want to play so much and you have this high interest, uh, yeah. high desire to, to compete and to play and to meet people. So you do some things that are not like uh, normal and that is why athletes uh, and why I have this podcast, a genuine athlete, because a genuine athlete needs to get over his ego, her ego needs to, you know, de decide and separate from ego because uh, being an ego person, a lot of times the, the people might say that, do not, that only watch tennis on TV, that ego, the tennis players are ego players, are, very, uh, are arrogant. But the yeah. things that you go through, how much you need to survive and adapt least, yeah. and, and uh, let go of expectations because ego is expectation. And you slept there, you did yeah. this, you traveled. So it's a lot of ego letting go. Do you have some yeah. stories about uh, uh, how you really told yourself, now I'm really letting go my ego or some expectation? Because you are a lady. Of course, you have different uh, expectations as we men do yeah. in a way. Not only expectation, uh, it's a different world and you need different you know, safety, security uh, measures in your life. Uh, maybe you remember something like that that threatened you and that you said, oh my God, I'm crazy. This is now the point or something I like think, that. I uh, think most of the things in China were a little bit crazy oriented. I think many, many players will agree with me that also they were there with me and they survived the same thing. But we wanted to go to one tournament. It was close to Mongolia last year. And there were not Chinese players, not many. And we're like, why they're not going there? It's like, oh, it's so far. It's it's crazy place. I was like, okay, we survived many things, you know, let's go. We took a train from Guangzhou to Beijing for eight hours, fast speed train, amazing, really good. But then we took a night train from Beijing to this place, 14 or 15 hours. It was a night train and it was a slow train. And it was six people, six beds, sleeper, and it was all open. So you have six people sleeping, six people sleeping, six, and it's like 
it's open it's not closed doors and again like it's kind of dangerous because you i was reading about some stories after that luckily after that and it was not the nice stories you, it's really dangerous because once they rob you they like you have no chance like they just leave at night and we we had such a big bags of course because tennis bags and we just had to leave it on the side or like you know it wouldn't go up so once you fell asleep you don't know who is getting into your bag and like yeah like it's it was crazy and we survived it but also people being so loud like at night talking on the phone and, and you're just going mm, why i'm here why i'm going to this place you know and then, but then you have the other side as well that you survive this and then you get to this place and it was so funny because it was close to mongolia really small town and i think these people there never in their life seen a white person or other race than them you know so we would just stand on on the street or walk on the street and they would stop they would take a picture of us they would take a selfie with us you know or in the in the supermarket they would stop us and take a picture of us or when i was eating uh, eating uh, in the restaurant they would also come to us and take a picture with us because they were so amazed like wow like white people you know like it was also like it was a nice experience because you feel like a star in china you know <laughs> so it's it's a nice memory that we had and and yeah you have bad things that there is one bad story from this train that we were coming back and it was after whole night in the train i didn't sleep well and we had to take a taxi only for like 300 meters to the metro station and it, this was a lady and we asked her how much it's gonna be you know like they don't speak english so you're just trying with your hand and she said something i don't remember like 200 and then we're like, okay, so we get into the car, we get there, we came out, we are taking our bags, we're giving her 200. And she's like, no, 400. We're like, what? Like 400, you said 200 and you're trying to argue in Chinese in, we would speak in Slovak. So it was very, you know, funny because we are talking in Slovak, she's talking in, in Chinese and she would not let go my bag. She would hold my bag. I've never seen stronger woman in my entire life she would hold it i would like rip her hand she would hold it until she broke it she broke my handle on the back it's not usable anymore you cannot even put it back anymore and so she's screaming at us and then we're like what like i was like help can someone help us in english but there are people they don't speak english but then luckily like two people came and they tried to help but they said oh she meant 200 per person and I was like, how is that possible that in taxi you pay per person? But you cannot fight because other taxi drivers were stopping by and they were like this big and they were, you can see that they're swearing and they were very aggressive. My heart, I was never more afraid in my life. I was never, it was terrifying. So we just gave her the money she wanted and we left with my broken handle that we couldn't even use anymore. So it was, I was shaking. I was shaking for like, three hours after that. So yeah, you have to go through these terrifying experiences and then you're like, is it worth it? But then you're like, yes, it is worth it. Yes, anyway, you are there, you go through and the thing with ego or with these situations is you go through and then you say, whatever happens next. So in a way you are putting yourself in a more dangerous situation because it didn't kill yeah. you, it made you stronger. And yeah. to connect this, uh, with your life, with your coach, you you are probably an except, uh, exception on the tour because there are not a lot of players who have the same coach for more yes. than 10 years. You have it now for 12 years, the same coach, uh, Jozef, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. how come is that? Uh, because with all these situations, stories that you mentioned, you need a person that you can trust, that you can count yes. on, that you can uh, be... Uh, connected connected uh, yeah how why are you like that and a lot of other players are like when the going gets tough or you lose they just ditch the ditch the coach even if they're not good the good players that have uh, finances they can afford this but also yeah. not so wealthy players do this i see and you didn't why why did you stick with him stay with him 
Yeah, because, because I know that in my tennis, I really need to be relaxed and then I played my best. He really brings me to this relaxed state that when I'm a bit nervous, he can see it. He tells me, oh, just go there. What will happen if you lose? No one will give us, you know, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. No one give you anything. So just go there, enjoy it, and just try to have fun. And I know that you're always doing your best. So just go there and enjoy it and, and do what you love your whole life. So I think that's the main thing because before him, I had another coach for eight years. So I'm really like, I, my foundation is like, I feel like I need someone who I trust and uh, someone for a long time. And that's when I'm myself, I feel like I'm myself. Like I'm not, if I'm, if I'm changing coaches, I would be a bit lost. I would be questioning myself. Is this right? Or maybe the one before or, and now like you, you get to know the person so well, like now I know what his answer will be already. Like I just ask him a question and I answer myself back because I know already he's thinking. And I think it's, it's really good. And yeah, just the trust that I have that whatever he tells me, I know he means it, you know, in his heart and he wants to help me and he wants to move forward. And he's very, he has a good logical thinking. So no matter what I ask, he always gives me a logical answer. And I like that. Yeah. So you were a good combination, a very strong fit. Because yeah. a lot of players also has that good connection with the coaches, but they uh, maybe get fed up with that. Maybe they are like, you know, already bored or something is on a plateau. How did you go over these uh, moments that maybe you are too much of each other, maybe you didn't want to see each other anymore because it was because tennis is stress, it's competition, yeah. it's a lot of travel. He was driving a lot, it was a lot of on him as well. How come did you get was your friendship so strong that that bond so strong that you said, you know, whatever, now it's like this, it will go over? I think we never went that far that we would say this is over, but there were, of course, there were times that we were questioning, but. I still feel like once you really trust in someone and you know that they, they, know, they want the best for you and then he knows that I will listen to him and I really trust him in everything what he says and, and sometimes we have like really good, not sometimes, many times we have really good conversation about things and he makes me like discover things from other perspective that I like, that, that it's not one dimensional but it's more like emotional and and just yeah it makes me like feeling safe and and just yeah i don't know how to describe it <laughs> he gives you the whole picture that you feel like at the best yeah. of yourself and, and um, as as my personality is a little bit like i need to be guided that i'm i'm not strong like okay i need to be like this 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 i need to do this 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 I need to be guided. So someone tells me, you do this, 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 and I will do it because I trust him. And that's, that's, I think, that's why it really works because he's the type of person that he goes, you should do this because, and he gives me good reasons. And I, and I think about it and it's true and then I do it. So that's how it works. Great. Um, yeah. Can you tell me a bit about your, because in tennis and in sport, the mental health, so your mentality, mindset, psychology, understanding your emotions and all this, with you explaining your struggles, frustrations, and how you dealt with them with, through your career. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you go through? You mentioned now with the coach and the friends and the people that you meet and the places that you stay that help you. That yeah. all together helps you, but uh, your struggles on court, maybe off court, the frustrations that you were feeling through your yeah. career. Uh, I just really feel like when I was younger, I was putting too much expectation on myself that I was like a perfectionist. I, I'm still perfectionist, but with a little bit less More experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I really feel like tennis is such a huge part of our life, but it's not everything. It's life is so huge and so complex that you shouldn't be just focused on one thing. I think you need to have a, uh, other things as well that you like 
and I, I love everything. I, I can Google anything and it's my passion. If someone asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I just go and I Google it and I love to explore other things. Like, for example, when we we're starting, we, we had to buy a car here in Australia because the renting, is, it was so expensive. So we just bought really, really cheap car for like $2,000. And of course, it's 24 years old one by one piece by piece everything got broke down like everything broke down in the car you can imagine like so many things like radiators hoses the whole head gaskets like the whole engine and the solenoid fluid and stuff like that and i feel like i'm expert now for holding cars that's australian brand because i i got so interested by it when we were repairing you know everything that i wanted to know how it works what it's for where to get it cheaper and and I just really get into other topics as well, not just tennis. And I think that's important to have like a... Broad horizon, yeah. Open. Yeah, broad horizon of things that, that you like. And it also gives you confidence maybe or something on the court as well. That you can, if you have a moment when you're down and you think about what I went through when I think about it, like I was in a, such a terrible place or such a terrible situation and I got through it. And when you're on the court and you're losing and you're like, well, this is nothing compared to what I've been through. Like just focus what you should do. Just think positive and just go point by point. That's so, so important. I, I think that it's important to practice this in your, in your training. Focus point by point. It doesn't matter if you won the point. It was amazing winner. Just forget it. Awesome. Go next point. If you lost a point, if you hit this fence, you, you laugh. Ah, that was a good fence. You go next point because you want to win the next one and next one and get to the last point, to the match point. And that's how I try to approach it. That tennis is such an amazing sport that you can have such a, like a diversity in every rally. Like it, it's not the same. And what, that's what I like because I don't like having the same link things. I, I feel like every rally you can create something else that's what i love about tennis that it's so creative you can think about other things how to play angles or drop shots or or hit hard and and yeah that's what i love great i love that you always uh, turn my question into the very very positive side and you give so much uh, because it means that you've trained yourself you've done a lot of job on yourself because you went through all these situations challenges, adversities, uh, but please indulge me in some of your frustrations. What was, so frustration it means, or anger, it means that you were experiencing something that you didn't want, or you were expecting something else, but yeah. that was, and, and you didn't know, you were powerless. So what was the frustration that you were finding yourself so in? I have, I have two things. So the first one was when I was younger as a junior, I felt like Federation would not support me at all. And I was number two, number three in my year born, like in my, in my group. And they would not give me any support. And I was just so angry. I was like, why? Like, why they're giving support to players that are behind me? They're, you know, worse ranking. And I would just get so angry. I would, again, I would turn this anger to motivation because i would like want to work harder to be the top so they cannot say that you cannot go there because you know like that would just really and people were saying oh you will stop uh, you don't have endurance and that's the the thing that go it goes it's motivation that you're like no i will show you i can do it and i will play as long as i can because i'm strong you know and that's that's how i found motivation and i'm still playing probably because because I enjoy it and because the other people were fueling me in this way as well. Yeah. Right. And the other thing maybe, again, when I told you about these four tournaments in six weeks and again, the Slovak Federation would not write one word about it. And I would be so hurt because other girls would win one of these Ten thousand dollars, and there would be article with the picture. You know, it means nothing, but for me, it meant something. And I won four in six weeks. And that time, ITF announced that I'm a player of the month, August. And they 
put on their website that I was a player of the month and they did a, the, the interview with me and I was so honored but Slovak Federation did nothing. And I was just so hurt that again, it was another fueling for me to continue and for me to fight. Again, I love how you flip it around because yeah, that's it. Uh, you don't have time on the court to whine about something, to stay in a certain, you know, my girlfriend, Anya, she told me that a lot of players are thanking the match, you know, giving away points. I think that you didn't do that anytime. Never. <laughs> because you were fighting all the time. Yeah, so that shows how much you've built yourself, the resilience and the fight. Uh, and I loved uh, that you mentioned the uh, last dance from Jordan, yeah. Michael Jordan, how he said, why would I worry about the shot that I didn't take? So exactly. being present in the moment is so important in sport, especially like table tennis and tennis, that you mm -hmm. are here now, that you do not allow a lot of yeah. influences because you can lose yourself so quickly. Yeah, that's right. You have to just go for it. You're there to play. So why to hesitate to play the game? Did you uh, connect yourself uh, with some of the coaches, uh, mental coaches, gurus, psychologists? Uh, you read some books that you can uh, refer to or remember that you like? I have, well, I have Joseph. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I never had any mental coach or anything. Uh, and I'm trying to get... Maybe I'm trying to talk to players and discover other personalities as well, because I feel like we're so different as people that for me, it's very interesting to see that how other players feel other things and how diverse we are. Because I feel like I'm not very, I don't get angry that easily. Uh, but when I was in China, my patience level went from here, here because there are different mentality, mentality and they would do things that would make me angry. But over time, you're there for six, I was there for six weeks. You get to learn how to live with it. And then you're like, wow, like the things that were really troubling me before was nothing compared to this one. And I'm still okay with it now. So I just feel like your mind is so strong to get through anything you can just if you think positive and believe in yourself and you will do it if you want to you really need to want it you began a group now on facebook inviting female tennis players to join to unite uh, to make uh, what is the slogan or what is written tennis experience or something from, from uh, bad experiences to positive future great i love it uh, I, I, I will support you and Anya as well that you continue this quest and this uh, support and uh, making aware and connecting because up until now tennis players were suffering for by themselves now not that you can suffer together you can win together and not win over ITF or WTA or something but win together that you can connect and bring new experiences more not not pleasant for ego but why would you need to suffer? You play tennis, you love tennis. Of course you want to enjoy life and not worry about if you will get that $98 or not, or how you lose money and you invest and you invest so much and it's such a narrow winning, only the winners win. No, you all win, you are all good. And I hope that in a few months, people outside of tennis will realize number 700 in tennis, wow. Yeah, and exactly. get something from it. It's not that it's bad because that's wow. So can you talk yeah. about the group and how you bonded with the ladies now? Uh, what is your idea for it, intention? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's what you said exactly. Like we are playing tennis. Like I could be sitting in the office nine to five, working, working on a computer, having this routine every single day and not being outside doing what I love. And I, I admire these people. Like my mom is IT, so she's, sitting eight hours a day with computer it's i i'm sure it's not for me I, i'm not the type of person i would not survive this i would be struggling so much so i think we really if you love tennis you need to understand that this is our passion and you should really enjoy it and no not just bring negative thoughts or just blame someone for something like of course we need a change but i mean just in other you know other things but uh yeah that group 
I had this in my mind for some time already because I, I love to connect to people. I love to connect to players. I love to talk to players and discover their stories as well. And I think they have such a different experiences and such a different backgrounds and different stories. And I loved hearing it. And I was like, I hopefully can see it somewhere on some flat platform, but there was nothing like it. And, and so my friend a few days ago told me that I should go for my ideas. And, and I was like, okay, this is perfect time for me to do it because when, if not now, when there are some changes happening. So I just created it. I thought maybe 30, 40 players would connect because it's not easy to connect tennis girls. It's, I think guys are a little bit different, you know, they're more friends with each other, but girls are very one side oriented. I don't know, they, they feel like uh, the other girls are threat or maybe sometimes they're jealous a little bit about things that sh they shouldn't be jealous they should more focus on themselves. But I think if you bring more people, and what I, what I really found in these last few days that I, I wrote to someone, hello, I created this group. Uh, you're more than welcome to join if you want. It's for all tennis players. You can join if you want. And most of them wrote me back with positive answer and they were so nice for me. They're like, oh, thank you so much for your message. And I was like, these are really nice girls. Like why we cannot be a group of nice girls together to have a, have a chat and, and just discuss about things to help, not just young players, of course, young players as well, but just to help others that maybe weren't in Australia or, and they don't have visa, uh, visa ideas how it looks here with visa or, or they weren't in China, they don't know how to go by this train. And I already survived this and went through this and others as well. So I think we should pass our information on to the other generation and other players because it's such a valuable experience and such a valuable thing to pass on because you can also like save someone so much money, cheaper flights, cheaper hotels, cheaper anything it's because over the years I, I became expert in finding saving things as well so many people text me oh can you find me the flight ticket there and there and it's overwhelming <laughs> but yeah I'm trying my best yeah this Facebook group is for all tennis players it doesn't need to be just the players that are still playing also ex-tennis players that have plenty of experience and also the young ones the juniors and I really hope that they can just talk, they can feel safe there, that it's private and no hesitation, no judgment there. Ask anything you want and we will try to help you. And, and we can share some nice pictures or some also not nice pictures from tennis courts that we see sometimes, you know? Like I have a, one funny story that two times in my life, I came to a tennis tournament and the tennis court was not the right size. So they would play full qualifying matches on the court that the service line was shorter. I would practice and my coach Joseph would be, why are you we were playing tie breaks? And I would just go double fold, double fold, double fold, double fold. And he's like, what are you doing? He would, he's, he's a very calm person, but he was like, what, why are you hitting so many double folds? Like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's small or something. And then... We asked the organizers and they just repainted it like a week ago. And the people that were repainting it took a Wikipedia information and it was wrong. On Wikipedia, there was a wrong measurement. <laughs> so they, they painted the court wrong size. So they had to like uh, repaint it again. So one day was off. They repainted it, but the matches they were played, it was, you know, it was after they, they finished the matches, they couldn't reverse it. But yeah, some girls played with the short court. Yeah. Crazy stories. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, nice that you emphasize how life has become and that it needed this big change now in 2020 uh, because we are not a threat against each other. We have totally missed the point of life. Uh, yeah. and you are representing joy and you are happy and you are the same you were in the same 
situations, thinking of a threat, thinking from fear, out of fear. So yes. this initiation, this uh, change that's happening now uh, needed this big shift in our thinking, in our feelings, in our understanding of life. And it's great that your uh, soul, your genuineness and your Facebook group and anything else that you do represents this. Come on, please, girls, fix uh, this or not fix, transform, shift this thinking, this way of yeah. thinking that I'm a threat to you. If you say how you play or if you say what you do, let's connect and let's grow together because this is new life. This is yeah. the new decade. Can you go deeper in this coming out of threat and coming out of joy, love, understanding, feeling? I feel like we should really embrace that we love tennis. Like we have one passion and that's tennis. So why should we be like unfriendly or why should I be jealous because some girl had a great result? Like that's her life. That's her tournament. That's her maybe luck, maybe her, her hard work, her determination that you don't know what's going on behind those players. Like you don't know what they're going through. So just don't judge them or don't really bring them down because I've heard many stories that other players would like abuse or, you know, bring them down. Like, oh, you're never going to make it or, you know, you're not fit enough or fit enough. Like you can get fit quickly. If you work hard, you can get fit. Like, it's not that it's for your whole life. I think many things can be changed. Even the mind can be changed with a positive mindset. And if you have a great support, I think it's, it's important to have, you don't need to have hundreds of people. If, even if your parents are not really supportive, I think you need one or two, even one person that is supportive and stick to that person, talk to that person, suck the energy and then share it. And I think that's important because once you share it and you see the joy or the reward that you give to other players or other people, that's what fueling you for the next time that you do it again. Like once you reach to someone and they're so happy that you reach, why you wouldn't do it again? Like it's, it's such a like, it's endorphins. It's like after match, you're feeling endorphins. And when you're bringing happiness, it's endorphins as well. So I think we should spread it because negativity is, it's not nice first. You don't look nice if, you, if you're serious like, like that, you know, looking at other players and looking at their skirt and looking at their bag and why? Like, it's their thing. Like, you can buy one or you can have another thing. It doesn't need to be brand. You can find nice things that are not brand. They're not expensive. And still, like some... People ask me, wow, where did you get this from? And I say, Kmart, because that's, in Australia, it's really, really, really good store. And they're like, oh, I would never shop there. And I was like, oh, really? But you would want this. And they're like, yeah, but you would not shop? Why? Why you have judgment? Just because it's cheap. I feel like people are having these things in mind that, that needs to be like broken. And once you get past that, it's like the whole new world. So I, I really hope the tennis players that in this group, not in this, only in this group, also some things on inst Instagram are starting with the stories and stuff like that. I think if you see other players joining and other players commenting and other players opening themselves, you open yourself as well because we should share all our experiences because it's unique. And that's the beauty of it, I think. So, yeah. And why would uh, you allow anyone else to suffer when you know the solution and you can yeah. pass it on? And if they grow, you grow. And it's that, that's, that's the point of life. So it's so, so good. And I'm so grateful that these things started to happen. I, I began to talk with myself and with my clients that I work mentally and, and with energy wise. In 2010, I was already explaining and I was already hearing prepare and be aware for 2020 something will happen and i didn't imagine the virus will happen you know i didn't think about an apocalypse or something i was just like okay i'll be ready and now yeah. i see uh, how people are waking up in another way they're also panicking but yeah. this shift is so strong and thank you that you are on this side and not on the other one that you've prepared yourself as well and that you are sharing and enabling others to live as well why would why would the girl like 20 years of age suffer and you have information for her 
yeah. and you can give it to her. So it's that simple in a way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I and endorse it. For one more thing that uh, now the big thing is this betting people, texting players. That's a big thing. And I really think, I feel like I am lucky in a way that I'm old now because maybe if I'm younger, I would suffer and maybe would be a bit depressed or if I would not have the right people around myself, maybe I would be a different person because these people text you after every single match, even if you win, because they're angry that they lost money, that they bet on each game that they lost, that you were winning 4-11 and then you lost and they cannot imagine how you could lose and they tell you terrible stuff. And I feel like this can hurt so many young girls because it's, it's just a teenager or just a kid and they don't understand that how these things work in the life and that these people are, are really sick in their head that they're betting $10,000 on, on one game or something. They don't understand the game and that they shouldn't take it personally. And I think that also in this group, if something like that happens, we should also uh, spread the word about it. Because now when I see it, I just, I just smile. Because you're angry already that you lost your match. Or if you win, you're happy. It doesn't matter. You keep smiling. But if you lost your match, you're, you're already, you have like millions of thoughts. What I could do better? What was wrong? What should I do next? You know, all these things. And then you see messages like, terrible messages and it brings you down even more and when you see it you should really just i just smile if you smile you will feel better it doesn't matter you can even cry but if you smile at the message and delete it put it into bin or report the person it brings you up again and then you're a little bit away from that match that you lost and you feel better about yourself because you were above this thing that happened to you that this guy messaged you and you feel like you're powerful because you were strong enough to to report it and not getting affected so that's what i think it's it's important to share with these young girls so they don't suffer if they don't have this right support i think i was very lucky in my life because i had only great people that you know were around me and this first coach and my parents had never pushed me into tennis and then joseph that yeah, I, I know I'm extremely lucky and that other people have it worse and, and tougher. And I'm trying to also like help them if I can. But yeah, I think you can get through it. It's just the mind. Yeah, the system is changing now, transforming. Yeah. And uh, also this with betting and all these abuses, I've heard about it, especially on the women's tour teenagers are being affected so it's great that you've mentioned this and continue this job of uh, making aware and conscious because this should stop and also mm -hmm. the betting money and that the organizations receive money from betting companies it should be completely differently organized uh, but you players need to step up not only in your ace and surf and forehand game but also outside of tennis court because tennis exists from everything, from the equipment, from the court uh, yeah. line uh, <laughs> people that yeah. paint the lines and Wikipedia. Tennis is everything, not just you playing tennis, it's, it's life. Uh, yeah. For the end, please can you um, share your vision for the future, for yourself, for your vision, and also with this, how you see now in 2020, with this change, with this shift happening, how you imagine the future of tennis? Uh, I think the whole world will turn into better, uh, not just in tennis, but I think also in schools, in other places that people can save time, save money, that we can do Zooms now. I think people will save a lot of time traveling to some meeting because they can do it online. And I think that's a great thing as well. And we can save the planet because we will not use that much of a, of a car or something. So I think uh, the future is uncertain as always you never know but you should be ready and you should be positive and you should really enjoy this life because it's way too short to be complaining about something you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow like you just need to enjoy your your tennis and do what you can to really be the strongest if you really want to be at the top and 
progress in other aspects in your in your physical training mental training nutrition you should really get to know also other things not just the tennis court and forehand and technique and and backhand but also other aspects of the sport and mental of course as well oh, yeah. and i think that this change this this crisis will really bring the change i think that it's already a change that they agree to to do this player panel first i didn't want to do it but now i'm really into it and i want to make a change and and help players so Great. That's it. What about you? You will continue play. You don't know. Uh, how as long as I'm I'm healthy, I will play. That's that's for sure. I'm I'm not quitting. It's tennis is way it's crazy how I love tennis. Great. I miss tennis now as well. I watched yeah. a video from you yesterday how you were hitting and I was like Anya, I really want to play. I'm sorry, I miss it so much. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I know that you will make a, a lot of kilometers on the road and eventually uh, you will have that amount that you can also purchase a first ticket uh, not a first class ticket but that you can fly yeah. more that you can drive uh, eventually uh, yeah. so that uh, a lot of players not on the lower because I am lower in tennis I am a recreational I can count myself as a lower uh, lower version you are yeah. a professional so you are a top version uh, so don't count yourself as a lower. Maybe you can change that name from lower ranking or something. It's top thousand is top thousand. It's wow. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Like it's so much. It's your whole life of working. It's not like you started playing tennis last year. So it's the the whole life behind every player that is giving to tennis. So it should yes. be appreciated. So let let's work, and I support you and. I know that others will too because you Thank have you. true heart intentions and that is uh, felt. And when you come uh, to people, to players like you come with messages and they open up, that is the future then, that I envisioned and that is now happening, uh, unraveling. So continue. Uh, thank you very much for being thank genuine so athlete. Uh, continue on your quest. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning in. Follow me on Being The Genuine Athlete Instagram and Facebook page. Share, like and comment and be genuine all the way.